And now let us recite the first act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O oh God, I earnestly repent of all my sins, and I am truly sorry that I have offended you. Most loving Father, have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify it, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, and absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. But as you are just, you govern all things justly. You regard it as unworthy of your power to punish one who has incurred to blame. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, your Son taught us that we need only ask to receive the things we require. Give us the grace to ask only for those things which will lead us closer to you. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. days the Lord said the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so great that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me I mean to find out while Abraham's visitors walked on farther towards Sodom the Lord remained standing before Abraham then Abraham drew near and said Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not, should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find fifty innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again, See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than fifty innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it. <clears throat> if I find forty-five there, but Adam persisted, saying, What if only forty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. But what if only thirty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but thirty there. Still Abraham went on, Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he persisted. Please, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, for the sake of those 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called you, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me. Against the anger of my enemies, you raise your hand. Lord, on the day I call for help, you answer me. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, on the day I call for help, you answer me. Second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. 
And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger, abounding in kindness. God does not always rebuke and nurses no lasting anger. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. When you call me, when you go to pray to me, I will listen to you. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah, with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips, through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me, the door has already been locked and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord.
praised by all of us more now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters. Though many have heard the cities, about the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, not many know of what exactly took place. Today we hear of Abraham pleading with God to save the people of these two cities. The story of the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah is told in the book of Genesis, chapter 18 and 19. Three men, believed to be angels of God, came to Abraham one day. After the angels received the hospitality of Abraham and his wife Sarah, the Lord reveals to Abraham his plans for the destruction of these two cities due to their immorality and sinfulness. In response, Abraham asked the Lord if he would spare the city if 50 righteous people could be found. To this, the Lord agrees. Abraham then pleads to the Lord God for his mercy at lower numbers of righteous. First 45, then 40, then 30, then 20, and finally 10. With the Lord agreeing each time. Two angels were then sent to Sodom and met Abraham's nephew Lot, who invited the angels to lodge and eat with him. <coughs> During their visit, we read in Genesis 19 that, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, encompassed the house, both young and old, and all the people from every quarter. And they called to Lot, and they said to him, Where are the men that came in to you this night? Bring them unto us that we may know them sexually. Lot refused to give his guests over to the inhabitants of Sodom, and instead even offered them his two virgin daughters. However, they refused this offer, and they complained about this alien, Lot, who would dare judge them, and they went to break down his door. Well, as the story goes, the angels rescued Lot and struck down the men with blindness. And they then informed the angels to Lot of their mission to destroy the city. Not even ten righteous people could be found. The angels commanded Lot to gather his wife, his family, and leave. And as they made their escape, one angel commanded Lot to not look back. However, as Sodom and Gomorrah were being destroyed with brimstone and fire from the Lord, Lot's wife turns and looks back at the city, and she becomes a pillar of salt. Thus Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Not even ten righteous men could be found in the city of Sodom. Do you know what a minyan is in the Jewish faith? According to Jewish tradition, it is necessary to have ten righteous men present to carry out religious celebrations. We find this reference in the fourth book of the Torah, the book of Numbers, where Moses sends out spies to scout the land of Canaan. Only ten return. And they tell Moses that Cana cannot be conquered. The Lord God was extremely disappointed with their lack of faith in his abilities. He then turns to Moses and Aaron and asks them, How long will this evil assembly provoke the Jewish nation to complain against me? From this we learn that an assembly, a minyan, is comprised of ten righteous men. Ten righteous men. You know, as I have gotten older, I have become more cynical and pessimistic about this world. I see and I read 
shades of Sodom and Gomorrah every day. The racism, the greed, the lies, the backroom dealings, the drugs, the gangs, the guns, the decline of morality, the failure to live the golden rule of doing unto others as you would want them to do unto you. And I am sure that the good Lord asks again, how long? Just two quick examples. I read the other day that over 26,000 pounds of cocaine were confiscated from one boat off the coast of California. The Coast Guard announced that within the past few weeks, they had seized over 13 tons of cocaine with a street value of over $550 million. Just the other day I read a 59-year-old woman who had just won $20,000 on a scratch-off lottery ticket, was arrested just hours later, along with her 39-year-old son, on drug charges. When the police showed up at her house with a search warrant, she allegedly was standing outside her house, holding three bags, in which the police confirmed later they tested positive for heroin. In searching the house, they turned up more drugs, including hydromorphone, ecstasy pills, more heroin. She was arrested and charged with selling heroin within 1,000 feet of the school. So much for enjoying one's winnings. In contrast, last week, we heard of the parable of the Good Samaritan. Though Samaritans were considered pariahs to the Orthodox Jews, this one Samaritan helped a total stranger, showing him mercy and kindness. We hear of so many examples of neighbors helping neighbors, strangers helping strangers, and it gives me a ray of hope that our society is not as of yet going to hell in a handbasket. But I do feel that our world and so many need a wake-up call. For as another phrase goes, the devil is alive and well in living in Hoboken, New Jersey, <laughs> in Chicago, in New York, in Manchester, New Hampshire, in West Virginia. <clears throat> Righteousness. You know, one cannot be truly righteous without God. There are many who have found the Lord, and there are many who are seeking to know the Lord. There are many who strive to live a higher life from many faiths, but there are so many more who seek only self-gratification without seeking God in His righteousness. Today we hear a portion of St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. Paul's main theme in this letter to the Colossians was about putting on the new man. My brothers and sisters, this becomes apparent in the life of a true disciple of Christ who truly seeks to be righteous in all ways before God. What one was is not what one becomes when one is reborn. The old becomes the new. Don't think that anyone is reborn in the spirit if one continues to live in their old self. Did not Jesus warn about putting a new patch on an old sack or new wine into old wineskins? When one is filled with the Spirit of God, one not only says the Lord's Prayer, they fill it. It becomes real to them. When one makes a true examination of conscience, one truly feels sorry for their sins, 
for one fills God's presence. And when one receives the blessed Eucharist, one does not receive just unleavened bread dipped in wine, but one truly fills the presence of the Lord, which becomes a true co-union with the divine. And so, my brothers and sisters, if there were only ten righteous persons. Seeking righteousness is a daily process of putting on the new person. For did not our Lord teach at the Sermon of the Mount, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. When one seeks the Lord and he comes into one's life, it is real, and the real journey to God begins. And so let us reflect on the words of today's readings, and let us reflect also on the words of St. Paul, as found in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 12, concerning this transformation, in which he writes, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, the Lord has seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God and God, light and the light, true God and true God, begotten and made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The Lord is far from the wicked, but the prayer of the just he hears. The prayer of the upright is his delight.
fragrance of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty God. Receive these offerings which we place before you, and grant that we who make our request to you may be willing to give to those who ask of us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Though the Lord be with you, the Lord our God. It is right to give praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. After his glorious ascension, in which the Holy Spirit was sent to govern, sanctify, and regenerate the church, he also came in truth, inflamed in love, and strengthened the church in its unity. Lord, you placed your Son at your right hand and sent the Holy Spirit, that by the power of the same Holy Spirit, the good news of immortality might resound throughout our world. So therefore, on this day, we join with the voices of of the seraphim and cherubim, the archangels and all the angels of God, with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, 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 Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess thee. Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And are all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffer, and die for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries, and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. 
at that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them, in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch, Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, the holy sacrifice in Immaculate Host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith, and now speak in peace. <clears throat> to these souls, Lord, and all who rest on Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, so part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for their, your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives have and after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things through him with him in him all honor and glory are yours almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit forever and ever Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, uh, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yeah. 
secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ your son and our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever Amen. may the peace of the Lord be with you always May the commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you. My Lord and my God, grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise. Will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord. See you. 
So that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us the bread of heaven and command us to petition the Father in your name. Teach us to bring our request in harmony with your will and so confirm us as your true disciples. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifices offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which we, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy, may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being. And apart from him, nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life. Life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light, which gives light to every man, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. He came flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. makes things a little bit easier for all of us. God be with all of you until we meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty and Eternal Father, you know our hearts and our minds. You know the love that we have for you. And so we come before you in prayer. And we pray for the sick and the injured. We pray, dear Lord, that your blessings might rest upon all of us and upon our families. And all of this we pray as our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for all the faithful departed, eternal rest grants unto their souls, O Lord. 
May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.